These women are now familiar with visits like this. They are always brought together when journalists and other NGOs pay them a visit. But alleged witches say nothing major comes out of frequent visits. Yet they do not get tired of talking about their problems. Housing is now the major problem. Their population increased from 250 in February 2011 to 386 by December 2011. But no extra huts have been built for them. So three people sometimes share one room. The problem we have is accommodation. At times when you come and meet us, it's pathetic. When your room collapses, they group us in a, a room like three or four people. So accommodation is really a problem. We caught up with Asana who opened her arms to two others who joined the camp. Although it's an inconvenience for her, she says the two women help her with chores. I'm not strong. She does everything. That's why I agree that she stays with me in the room. Mm. But the other two are itching to have their own place. Healthcare is also a problem. Alleged witches deal with their own ailments. Society had banned them and government has shown no concern. It is not an issue of whether government can help. It is an issue of responsibility. And it's a matter of right that government must intervene in their life to support them in the era of providing their basic needs. Other foreigners, other countries, citizens, as a result of other war or whatever like the Ivorians who are currently in Ghana here, living in Ghana as refugees and government of Ghana has a responsibility to meet certain needs of these people. Why can government do that for her own people who are internally displaced within Ghana? The Tindana who is the overlord of the area says the women are suffering but he cannot send them away. He said government should take necessary measures to assist them. Children are also doing time keeping their grandmother's company and serving them. But their education and childhood are being mortgaged, guaranteeing them a bleak future. Indeed, their grandmothers are happy. But at whose expense? George Cobner, TV3.